Good morning. Uh, we are here today at actually my warehouse, which is my day job. So I started the video of installing the winch rope and it went fantastic and I'm very happy with the winch rope. And somewhere right about, I don't know, that far from the winch rope being done being pulled in, the winch just stopped working. I wasn't sure why and so I kind of fiddled with this and that and I got it working. Pulled it out the other day to kind of take a look at it and see how things were going. The winch is still not working. Uh, looking online, it seems to be a problem with this particular, this is a 9.5 XP winch from Warren. Uh, and I don't know if this is a problem that is very common to Warren's entire lineup. I don't know if this is a problem with all of their winches, but it seems to be a specific problem with this winch when mounted into an ARB bumper. Typically you would mount a winch what they refer to as feet down, where the bolts come in from the bottom and hold it that way. Well, ARB mounts their winches feet forward, so the bolts come in from the front. And I don't know, that probably improves packaging somehow, whatever, I'm not an expert, I don't know. The problem occurs that there are drain holes in the motor, so if you get water in there, if you go through a water crossing, whatever, uh, there's a, a, there are two drain holes. There's one set this way and there's one set that way, okay, from the factory. Uh, well, I guess one of those from the factory is plugged with silicone because they think it's going to go feet down and most people don't need it. So what happens is when you mount this thing feet forward, now all of a sudden that drain hole is no longer accessible because it's pointed this way, right? It's not pointed down. So they tend, when they fill up with water, they tend to retain that water and they will corrode and rust and get all nasty inside. I'm assuming that's what's happened with this. It just kind of fits all the parameters. That's kind of how it's acting. So I need to actually remove the motor from the winch assembly itself. And then I'm gonna take the motor apart and clean everything up on the inside, get everything working up real good again, get it back together, get it back on. Problem is, with the winch in the bumper, which it exists down in here, and there's a, a separation in the bumper here, there's a you know, structure to it, I can't remove the motor from the winch without taking it out from the bumper. Well, I can't get the winch out from the bumper until I take the bumper off of the truck. Eh, is what it is. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna leave this rolling and we'll do a happy little time lapse. Uh, I'm doing this here at my warehouse because I have access to a forklift and I would rather not try and lift this up with just the guns. I'm gonna get started. Thank you for watching. Okay, so I'm probably a little bit dirtier and I know I'm a whole lot sweatier because it's South Carolina and it's warm today, although you can't see it from there, but it's raining like crazy out there today. You see, I've got the bumper off. The winch is now out of the bumper. The winch is inside. 
It's a whole lot more of a pain than I thought it was going to be. I didn't bring my snap ring pliers with me, so I couldn't get the hook end off of the winch rope. Uh, there's a little snap ring in there. I tried it with needle nose pliers. I tried to get my pocket knife in. Not happening. So uh, I unwound all 100 feet off of the winch so that I could get it off. It's all now in there. My original plan was I was going to take all this off of here and just kind of wind things up and put the bumper back on because it's probably going to be you know, two or three days before the winch goes back in. But looking at it now, I mean, as you can see, there's wires all over the place and I don't know, I'd have to coil them up and I think it's just going to be easier to just leave it here. I'll just have to try real hard not to get into an accident over the next couple of days. You know, is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and take the bumper and I'm just going to... I don't know, I'll probably put it over here somewhere. Over there maybe, I don't know. I'll put it somewhere and we'll get headed for home. Uh, thank you for being bored. Okay, now I'm at home in the garage. Next step, I gotta pull the motor assembly off of the hub assembly or the, this is the gear tram assembly and this is the, the whatever. It's, it's, uh, they gotta, I gotta take that piece off of that piece. So, so I guess wish me luck. Uh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Uh, I've never taken a winch apart before. I have taken electrical motors apart before, just a little thing, pull the you know, thing out and get the brushes and move the brushes. I've pulled a hundred different starter motors apart because I don't know, because I'm cheap and I'd rather fix it than purchase a new one. But I think that's kind of what I'm doing here is I don't want to pay, it's you know, a couple hundred dollars for, or you know, if you get a, a factory worn one, it's $300 for the new winch motor. Um, I think I've seen some online. Some are advertised for like a hundred bucks. Hey, we rebuilt. I don't know if I trust those. Uh, I've seen a couple of two hundred bucks. Actually, saw one. Mm, mad at myself. Saw one on Amazon the other night. It was used but in good condition, which always means just somebody just returned it, right? It was one hundred twenty-five bucks. And I, like I saw it when I was going to bed. Got up next morning, like oh maybe I should just pay. It, it was gone. Gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? So again, wish me luck. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can take this thing apart. Okay, so you're just gonna have to look at my hands going, you can't see my face, but should just be a three eighths. Yep. Well, that feels very unsure. So I was expecting the bolts here to just kind of go crack and then like zing, like just kind of spin out. It feels kind of gummy, if you will. Oh, there's one. Yes. Yeah, boy, howdy. Right, I'm gonna grab me a pair of pliers to get that out of there. Okay, got the pliers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can you see all the juicy rust? Look, mmm, nasty. Okay. I'm also, let's see, so this gets mounted. So when this gets mounted in the truck, this side is up, this face is forward. You can actually tell from where we're sitting, there's still water in this case. And I don't know how much you can see, but there is a little weep hole right there, and that is supposed to be pointed at the ground. Okay, so if it's sitting like this, the way Warren intended, it would be draining water, but it's not because it's sitting like this. So there is, in theory, there's supposed to be a second one around here somewhere. I don't see it there. I don't see it there, so I don't know. Maybe they lied. Maybe there's only the one. Hmm. No. So I gotta pull this, from my understanding, at this point, it should just pull out. It's probably kind of gummed up in there. I'm gonna see if I can get like a screwdriver into the weep hole, maybe pop it out, maybe tap it a couple times with a hammer, see what we can do. All right. Oh, screwdriver in the weep hole for the win. Now, I've read a couple articles online talking about 
how to do this, how to get this done. And they actually mentioned that this might happen, that the stator or the windings, whatever, might actually stick into that there. Oh, there we got it. So this is the theoretical weep hole that is supposed to drain all the water out. Now I had been told that there's two and there it is. So this little chunk of silicone that I just pulled out of there, that is why this winch was full of water. Clean it up. So now you can see when I put it back on and this is the front of the vehicle and that's down, that will allow the water to escape. So now we can set this aside. I don't need that for a minute. This, look at that. Look at, look at what a disgusting mess that is. This here, all of this rust, all this corrosion, this is why it's not working. And this can take quite a bit to clean up. Look at that. Look at all of that. Look at that. Oh, this isn't going to be fun. Okay. So here's where we're at. I broke my tripod. What I have done in the last five minutes, where the time flew by like it was zero to you guys, is that that's all paper lining in there okay so i used a little bit of uh, battery cleaner just kind of sprayed it in here to try and get rid of some of the corrosion these are the brushes for the motor okay these ride on i believe this is called the commutator here so this was just coated in nastiness you saw it before it's a little bit cleaner now i kind of took a steel brush to it took a little bit of scotch brite to it just to kind of clean it up the inside of the motor is just coated in rust. Like you can see it there. And these, the brushes, which are supposed to be spring loaded like this so that that can kind of sit in there and everything rides and, and everything touches. And you can see that they're rounded off because they actually do ride uh, on this piece here. They were not moving. They were absolutely stuck in place and they wouldn't move back and forth. And so now at least I've got those moving. Uh, you can see that there is still a ton of rust and corrosion in there. We've kind of flip it around, look at the other way. Like you can see all of that rust that's in there. I would be willing to bet that I can sort of put this all back together. If I take and I, you know, get rid of this rust off of here, I've got that cleaned up. I've got the brushes so that they are kind of mobile again thinking if I get rid of a lot of this corrosion, I should be able to put it back together. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to look into it and maybe I'll see if there's a, a electrical motor shop around here that might be able to, you know, do this a lot better than me. So, so I will keep you updated. See if I can give you a shot, get everything in it. Hey, uh, I'll see if I can keep you updated. Uh, give me a day or so. I'll look into things and see where we end up with this. Okay, so now I am back to get the winch installed back into the winch bumper. I did some cleaning. I did some refurbishing of the motor last night. I've got a couple of pictures. Here's a couple of pictures I'll show you while I'm speaking here. I didn't take a lot of video on this, I guess specifically because I knew I wasn't going to do a particularly good job of this. Really all I did was I kind of took the motor apart and cleaned everything up as best I could, scraped away as much of the corrosion as I could and the rust, used some sandpaper to sand here and there. I took the brushes out and I got the brushes cleaned up and moving like they should be. I got the bearing moving like it should be and then just kind of repainted everything on its way back together. Um, I just kind of didn't want to make an instructional video for here's how you pull this motor apart because I didn't want people following my example of not doing a good job. Um, I talked to a couple of motor, electric motor rebuild companies uh, that are here in my local area and they both told me that we're just not going to save any money if 
you know, we rebuild the thing. If you can buy a whole new motor from Warren for 300 bucks, it, it just do that. You're not going to save any money here. So I decided, let's just go ahead and do what I can do. Uh, and I have every confidence that it will work. I'm not really sure how long though. Like this might get me through the next six months. It might get me through the next forever. I just don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and get this reinstalled, put back in, get all this crazy wiring put in, and, uh, and then we'll get the bumper back on the truck. Okay, so the winch is back in and the bumper is back on and it works fantastic. Uh, I haven't actually taken it out. I'm going to take it out this weekend and actually test it out on the trail. So keep a watch out for that video as it comes at you. But for now, it's back in and just, I guess, my own ignorance and not having a winch before. The first time I used it out on the trail, I thought it was doing just fine. <laughs> Turns out as I was winding this back in, man, it sounded so much better and the motor was running faster. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. This weekend, I'll also be testing out this recovery ring that I just picked up. Uh, this is kind of like the uh, soft shackle version of a snatch block, uh, so we're going to get that tested out. These are what you need to use with a synthetic winch rope. So that's it for today. I'm still super excited. Make sure you like and subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss any future notifications for videos that we'll have coming up to you. And thank you so much for watching.